Many people have asked for me to make a video talking about my favorite roller coaster restraint types. Just as many other channels have done, I am going to be discussing some of my personal favorite and least favorite roller coaster trains and restraints and talk about why I like or dislike them. Keep in mind that none of these are in any particular order, just me discussing what I think about these types of coaster restraints. And as a note, I'm only including ones that I think are really good or really bad. I'm not going to be including ones that I think do their job just fine, but are just kind of middle of the road, such as the B&M vest restraints, the B&M classic over the shoulder restraints, and the over the shoulder restraints found on aerodynamic suspended coasters. So basically any restraint that I don't think is particularly great or particularly bad, I won't be including. These are just ones that I specifically think stand out as being really good or really bad restraints. First, I'm going to talk about the worst restraints that I've experienced. We have the Vacoma Flying Dutchman restraints. These just feel like they barely hold you in. They're very confusing, and thus, the dispatches take forever on these rides. Just pretty bad restraints. There's not much else to say here. Next, we have the classic aerodynamics over-the-shoulder restraints. These are just basically known for one thing and that is headbanging. Basically, every classic arrow looper out there, you'll find all kinds of headbanging with these restraints, especially if you're not sitting in just the right seat. So that's a pretty common issue. The only one that seems to not have this issue is Tennessee Tornado, which was a later design with different track and uh, different types of elements. Next, we have more aerodynamics restraints, and these are the ones found on mine trains, like Cedar Creek Mine Ride, Carolina Gold Rusher, and Adventure Express. Even though some of the mine trains are pretty decent, these restraints are just absolutely terrible. I get stapled every single time because it's just one lap bar that comes across the whole row. It has to be pushed down as far as it can go. They basically have to push it down all the way and it's just really uncomfortable, especially if you don't cross your legs and put them under the seat. So that's, that's a tip for you right there. Make sure you cross your legs and put them under the seat if possible. Next, we have Gerslauer over the shoulder restraints, and I've experienced these on Mystery Mine at Dollywood, and even though I think that ride is pretty fun, it does have quite a bit of headbanging, and it is due to these restraints. Admittedly, they're not one of the worst restraints compared to some of the other ones that I've placed on here, but they're bad enough, and they just feel like they're very unnecessary on this ride. I think this ride would be just fine with lap bars. The final restraint I want to talk about that I did not enjoy were the Premier lap bars. And I realized like on the Flight of Fear coasters, they used to have over the shoulder restraints, so it's good that they have lap bars now. But the Flight of Fear coasters and the Backlot Stunt coasters both have these lap bars, and they're worse on the Flight of Fear coasters, but they have these really weird, big, bulky, orange things that push down on your feet and your feet are basically just smushed every time you ride these rides and it is way worse on the flight of fear coasters like i said they're just uncomfortable and these rides would be so much better if they didn't have those they're just so stupid they're some of the stupidest things they're probably the stupidest things i've ever seen on a roller coaster restraint i can't stand them i have no idea why they're there Flight of Fear is a really good supporting coaster. I think they're fine rides, they're very intense, but you can enjoy them to the fullest extent because of these things. Going on to something more positive, I'm going to talk about all of the best restraints that I've experienced on coasters. Starting off, I'm going to talk about the Phantom's Revenge lap bars. Now these are really underrated. Phantom's Revenge is an amazing ride, really intense, and of course it has amazing ejector airtime at the end. And part of the reason that airtime is so amazing is because these lap bars come down from the side and they barely touch you. They're really not touching your waist at all, so you have tons of room. They're just super comfortable, they leave lots of room, and these were modified because the original Steel Phantom, when it was converted into Phantom's Revenge, they used the chassis from the original Arrow trains but Morgan overhauled the actual trains, built new bodies, and they built these restraints to go along with it. And I wish more coasters had these because it would be absolutely amazing. I think it'd probably make some other rides a lot better, but these are just really good, comfortable restraints. 
Up next is the RMC lap bars. I've experienced three trains like this, and I do not have a problem with these restraints. A lot of people don't like these because of the shin guards, and I can understand those complaints, I think, especially if you're a taller person. I'm not that tall myself, and the shin guards really don't bother me. I think these big, bulky RMC lap bars are actually, like, really comfortable, and typically I don't get stapled with them either. So I really just don't have a problem with these. I think they're super comfortable, and and they're really good at restraints in my opinion. Next on the list is a true classic, and if I had to pick one that I think is the best out of all these, a strong contender would be the Intamin T-Bar Restraints. These are just phenomenal. The most comfortable restraints I've experienced, I would say. They're extremely open, and they just give you so much room for amazing airtime. These are just exactly what you want out of a restraint. If you're going to have any kind of restraint, these are the way to go in my opinion. They're just super open. It's just one bar that comes between your legs, so your legs aren't crammed in at all. There's plenty of room to move around, and they're just super comfortable and not bulky whatsoever. Next up we have mock over the shoulder lap bars. I know a lot of people love these ones as well, and for good reason. These just feel so premium, and to me that's just the perfect way to describe them. I rode Copperhead Strike and the trains have these awesome elevated seats, so your feet just kind of dangle and then you pull these lap bars from over your shoulders, and the lap bar itself is just super comfortable, provides an amazing ride every single time in my opinion. These restraints are just perfect, and I know Intamin has even taken a lot of inspiration from Mach, some of their newer trains, like the ones found on Pantheon, they're very similar to these. So I think it should be interesting to see how Intamin pulls these off, because these are really good restraints. Definitely among the very best that I've experienced. And coming up here, we have the Great Coasters International Millennium Flyer trains. And these trains just feel really open. They sort of have a T-bar that comes up between your legs, so it's just one single bar. These trains are super comfortable, they have lots of room, and they just provide amazing airtime-filled rides on the GCIs that I've experienced. One thing about these, though, is you gotta watch out because you will get stapled by the end of the ride sometimes because they do come down throughout the ride, which is unfortunate. So you're probably gonna have to try Try to hold them up with your hand if you don't want to be stapled at the end. This was a big issue for me when I rode Mystic Timbers. As comfortable as these are, they staple you throughout the ride, which is not fun. And they come down very easily. So definitely watch out for that. But otherwise, the GCI Millennium Flyer trains are really comfortable and really good restraints. Another classic on the list here, these are the B&M clamshells. These are found on many Hyper and Giga coasters by B&M, and they're super bulky, really similar to a T-bar. You sit down in these nice bucket style seats, and you have this T-bar like restraint that comes down, and there's just a clamshell shaped restraint that comes down on your lap. In my experience, these offer quite a bit of room, especially on a ride like Diamondback. I always get tons of room on that ride. Just insane amounts of space for some reason on that ride specifically. But overall, these do give you lots of room. They're super comfortable. They give you lots of airtime, and even though they're really big and bulky, and it is kind of weird, they're really good restraints, so you, you really can't go wrong with these. Next up is one that I think a lot of people forget about when they're talking about some of their favorite restraints. I feel like because to me these are just really really good. And these are the restraints found on the train for Steel Curtain, the SNS Hypercoaster at Kennywood. Now these trains are among the very best that I've ever been on because they're so open. There's nothing that comes up on the side of the trains and then you have this T-bar like restraint. And Steel Curtain does have shin guards, but to me these shin guards are the least restrictive shin guards I've experienced out of any coaster I've been on. You really don't notice them, at least from my experience. And these lap bars are just really comfortable. The trains are super open. The seats are really comfy, and to me, these are like the perfect restraints here. You really can't get much better than this, in my opinion. To me, these lap bars are up there with the likes of the Intamin T-bars. In my opinion, they're that good. Steel Curtain is just a super comfy ride because of these amazing restraints. The last one on the list that I want to point out is the classic Buzz Bars, which can be found on many old-school wooden coasters, even some newer ones as well. 
these are just one single fixed position bar that doesn't come down on your lap so you have tons of room on these coasters. I've been on a couple coasters that have something like the buzz bar such as Big Dipper at Geauga Lake and some of the classic rides at Kennywood and they're just amazing because I mean it's basically like not having a restraint at all and you really can't get much better than that. The best restraint I guess is no restraint so what do you guys think about my selections? Be sure to let me know what some of your favorite and least favorite restraints are and why. Like this video if you enjoyed it, it really helps out my channel, and subscribe for much more awesome content in the future. Like my page Coaster Daddy on Facebook, and follow me at Coaster Daddy Official on Instagram. Thanks for watching. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.